Hello, Thomas. Hello. Um, thank you that for inviting me here. It's uh, one of the most beautiful foundations I ever visited. Um, could you explain me something about the history of this place? This is a very particular place because uh, uh, this is a place uh, which was created by the artist himself. Artung uh, thought about this place, this uh, estate uh, in the 60s. Uh, he, he and Bergman purchased um, this, uh, this field, this uh, olive trees field, and um, they, they built uh, this house and uh, the studio. And this is on the Riviera, so there is this great blue sky, there is a swimming pool, uh, everything is very pure with uh, great white walls. And um, this is a place in which uh, they, they lived, and okay. this is a place in which they painted, uh, so that uh, there are uh, two studios here, uh, which are really impressive with a lot of blotches on the wall, uh, with the tools of the two artists. And um, they died in the late 80s, and uh, after their death, uh, the place became a foundation. So it is very close to the atmosphere it was in the 60s and in the 70s. But of course, it is a bit different because we need uh, officers and we need uh, structures for the teammates. And did they have already plans? Did they uh, prepare their legacy? Yeah. Artung felt about the future of his work and about the future of the work of Bergman at the beginning of the 80s. And uh, there is a, a legacy which is um, uh, felt uh, in uh, 81. The first one is in 81, okay? The first project of legacy. And uh, at the very beginning, it was um, planned to be a place in which uh, there would be s researchers, scholars, curators. So that Artung was really, I think, uh, very open-minded because uh, uh, in the hand it was supposed to be a kind of museum but not only it was supposed to be a place where you can uh, think about art and uh, in general not only in, ge their art. in general exactly okay. but the, the of course the, the main uh, source of uh, of uh, reflection uh, was the work and the archives of Artung and Bergman okay so and um, when he wrote his will, did he stipulate very exactly what he wanted? Not at all. No, no. What is stipulated in the um, testimony, we say? Yes, in yeah. the testimony. Uh, yeah, he, he, he said that uh, uh, he wanted to um, promote, uh, to enhance the recognition of uh, his work and uh, of uh, Bergman's work. Uh, but we can feel that there is something more general uh, about the researchers. But in his mind, it was focused on his work and on Bergman's work. But it is open. Okay, so he doesn't stipulate how you have to promote the work? Not at all. And yeah. did, he, um, did he create a board? Did he already have some people that he wanted to be involved no, in the that, project? That, that was not so precise. Okay. Uh, of course, in uh, Artung's mind, there was uh, the general idea and uh, then he, he just he wanted to uh, to imagine uh, a very free uh, structure and a very independent one okay, okay? Uh, with uh, uh, private finances okay, okay? but he, he, he didn't think about a precise board that was in a second time after his death okay because he doesn't have they ha don't have children yeah so there's no family involved this is one of the the key of the key part of uh, the legacy there is no children so that um Artung and Bergman felt free to uh, imagine a structure without any affective aspects okay. you know only yeah. professional aspect aspects okay. with art historians uh, wo with people who are uh, uh, curators or critics uh, and, and so on, but not the family at all. Okay, and the budget, there's a budget because you say it's private sponsored, it's private sponsored only from Hartung and Bergman or there are other people involved to sponsor the project? 
Artung and Bergman, when they died, I don't know how to say, but uh, they, they had a lot of money, okay? And they were very generous and they, they thought about the future so that they decided to undo the foundation with this amount of money. Okay. And, and this is really marvelous for us because uh, there is a great uh, sustainability for the foundation thanks to them, okay? But um, moreover, there are two other sources of uh, incomes for the foundation. First, I would say that uh, there could be uh, additional incomes um, with, uh, for example, copyrights, expertise, um, visitors in the foundation and so on. And you have to imagine that here uh, we want to develop a lot of projects so that sometimes uh, we need more money and uh, because we have great uh, artworks, it is possible for us um, to sell some of those artworks in great museums, for example, okay. through our gallerist, and it is a way for us to develop our projects. You have an amount of works? Yeah. And how did you divide the works? So you told me you have works that you will never sell, that mm -hmm. are from the foundation, mm -hmm. and then you have some works that are there to, to fund the foundation. I would say that uh, Artung and Bergman uh, considered that after the death uh, it would be very important to develop the recognition of their, uh, of their career and uh, some periods of their career was, were less famous. Okay. So, so that it was really important to have an amount of works uh, which were supposed to uh, enter great collections, great museums. Uh, to give you a very concrete example, Artung uh, died in 1989 and uh, he kept on creating until the very end of his life. But the very last part of his career, between 87 and 89, he didn't have time to really develop it, de develop it uh, in museums. So that after his death, it was very useful to have uh, the part of this work, uh, which was um, uh, uh, likely to, uh, to, to be sold in museums, okay. because <laughs> it is a way to uh, uh, enhance the recognition of the artist. Yeah, yeah. So you have a certain, it's actually it's a real strategy. Yeah. You had really a strategy yeah. how to put the works in the museums yeah. and how to put it in the market. Yeah. And based on the strategy, you decided what kind of works would be for the market, what kind yeah. of works for the museums, uh, or how uh, did you... This is, this is not so, so heavy, mm -hmm. uh, because this is not exactly our strategy. We uh, untrust our gallerist uh, to, uh, to tell us what would be the best strategy. For example, sometimes you need to have a, a work in a private collection uh, to make it visible, mm -hmm. because some private collections are very famous. And, uh, and uh, because uh, so, uh, a collector, a very uh, famous French collector, for example, uh, says, uh, okay, I want this work, this is a way to convince the museums course, that yeah. they have to, <laughs> to choose uh, a work uh, li like, uh, like it. Okay, so, so it was not defined from the beginning what works no, would be for the foundation and what works would be for the market or no, for the museum? it is impossible. It's very... The, the, the situation is, is completely different now and 20 years ago. Okay. If, if it is, uh, if it is uh, completely set, this is impossible to, to, uh, to adapt yourself. Okay, so now it's because we, we say a lot that you have to make like a kind of A, B, C. Yeah. Strategy like the A are the works for the foundation, the B works are for the market, and the C works are only for the museums. But you didn't make this. You you see how it develops yeah. every time, from time to from yeah. case to case. You yeah. look at case to case. Yeah. Okay. And um, I just want to go back to the beginning. To do you have a board? How how 
how is this organization working? Of course, there is a board. There is a board with a president, with uh, some representatives of, uh, of the state, for example, the uh, culture ministry, uh, the, um, I don't know the word in English, the Ministère de l'Intérieur, uh, someone who is uh, um, in charge of uh, the, the city, uh, the, you know, the, uh, the mayor, you say? Yeah. Uh, and uh, some, um, some art historians uh, and uh, everybody has a voice and uh, they vote so I propose a strategy yeah. and, uh, and they decide if uh, it is okay for them or not I would like to talk about more on the research yeah. and the catalogue raisonné can mm. you tell me something about the catalogue raisonné of both artists when did you start to make the catalogue raisonné of Harpo? Because there is a catalogue raisonné. There is a catalogue raisonné. Uh, first, I would say the catalogue raisonné um, is our daily concern here. This is the, the key word of the foundation. Okay. This is the main mission, the main task, the main target. Uh, even when uh, we are on uh, other projects, we keep always in mind Le catalogue raisonné. Okay. okay. Uh, we are very lucky because both Hartung and Bergman were very concerned by uh, the by by the fact that uh, um, um, they, they were very conscious of the importance of the archives. Okay. okay. So that the to give you an example. Uh, in the late 50s, they decided to hire a secretary who was in charge of uh, collecting all information about all the works and to write it down in, uh, in files, uh, to, to, to write lists with uh, all the information about the works, uh, both paintings and works on paper. So, uh, we have an extraordinary substance which is at the source of the catalogue raisonné. Um, they, they did a great part of the work, okay. but of course this is not enough. Now we have to, we have to, to manage them, to, uh, to make them accessible. Uh, and there are so many, so many works. And you know, we want to make uh, this catalogue raisonné really modern, so that we decided uh, to uh, digitalize all our informations and uh, to make them accessible on the internet. Okay. Um, we published online the catalogue raisonné of the prints uh, concerning both Artung and Bergman. Okay. Okay? And for Artung, we published online uh, the catalogue raisonné from uh, 14 to 44 uh, for the, the paintings and the work on paper. And I hope uh, the job will be over for both Artung and Bergman in five or four or five years. So, and um, do you work together with, with uh, external researchers or do you have the internal knowledge here and your researchers who work on the archive? As I told you, you th there is a, a, a very big amount of uh, information here thanks to the artists them themselves, the uh, thanks to the archives. Uh, but uh, of course we need help and uh, researchers are, are here to uh, help us. Uh, but not only researchers, for example, the secondary market is a good way to collect information about the works of Artung and Bergman. So how do you work with the secondary market then? How do they collect information? You know, we share information uh, because uh, collectors want information on their works. Uh, we need uh, uh, pictures, uh, we need to know uh, the state of a work. So this is uh, really the daily life of the foundation. Uh, this is not um, it's not a way for us to, to be um, uh, in direct link with uh, auction houses and uh, no, not at all. We, we, we are not uh, really concerned by uh, uh, the, the prices and, and so on. But the, the, the information, the, the very material information on the works, of course, we need, we, we need them and they need it. So 
we share information. Okay, you have read the credibility of the market, you gain the credi credibility. E exactly, because we are very uh, hard when uh, there is forgery. We say, no, it is absolutely impossible, okay? Uh, so, of course, sometimes it is a bit hard, but for the credibility, it is completely necessary. So, you, what you say is that you give authentication yeah. brevets. How, how do you work? How do you do that? There is a, you know, an internal committee mm -hmm. with, um, with uh, experts uh, who were former assistants of Hartung and okay. Bergman. Yeah. Uh, and they, they, they know by heart uh, the works of the two artists. So uh, this is really natural for, for us. Um, let's talk a little bit on um, the museum side. So it's very interesting because actually you already bring certain topics to the world. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you, you, you show your, you, you have the archives who are open and you say just come now. You, you really say this topic would be interesting to this person. So you do already research on topics and you look for specific researchers who could li like to work on who would like to work on this topic. You're right. In an ideal world, uh, we could imagine that uh, uh, every art historian uh, would come to your foundation and discover everything and uh, do the work, do the job by, by themselves. But this is not an ideal world. Uh, of course, we 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 are forced. Uh, to, to, to work a lot and then to imagine connections with uh, people who could be interested in, uh, in the works of the artists. Okay, so actually the knowledge, there's a lot of, a lot of knowledge here actually. Yeah. yeah, and sometimes, to be completely honest with you, sometimes we say uh, uh, we don't think about anything, we are just here to, uh, <laughs> to preserve uh, the archives and the works and then people from the outside world come and, uh, and, and they work and they, they think exactly um, uh, how they, they want. But to be honest, of course, we have a lot of knowledge here and um, we ask our... Lines yes, exactly. Somewhere. Yeah. That's interesting. So you have a list of researchers yeah. that you have in your mind. Yeah. And that you know, okay, they would be interesting exactly. to work on an abstract exactly. or on the exactly. figuration or on but, certain but topics. Not, a, not only, uh, sometimes uh, um, uh, we, we need something for the foundation. I give you a very concrete example. A few years ago, um, we, we planned an exhibition about Artung and uh, Foreign Legion, okay, uh, during World War II. And, uh, we were, we were unable to think about uh, the, the structure of the armies, uh, the history of the foreign legion. So that we called someone uh, who was the main specialist of, uh, of Germany and foreign legion. He was not at all a specialist of Artung, but he was specialist of a field. And we asked him to help us to think about the links between Artung and the army. And that was a great job. So, you see, this is not only uh, art historians, art not at all. You have to, uh, to mix uh, different skills. Okay, so it's interesting. So you have an idea, you work on this idea, and then you see who can help us. Exactly. That's one part. But another part is also that you have some very abstract exactly. ideas that you give to them and then they can work. Exactly. On. So you, you do both things. You develop ideas inside and then you put little seeds yes. outside, but you give them the seeds exactly. and then it develops outside. It's very interesting because then you have a double. Yeah double um, content actually yeah, yeah. from the inside and from the outside absolutely do you have a line somewhere like we want to reach this at a certain moment um, is there some goal like mm -hmm. you said the catalog is only is very important yeah. that's a big main it's mm -hmm. one of the main goals mm -hmm. is there are there other goals that you yeah. have in mind yeah um, i think there are two main aspects for the recognition of uh, two historical artists. First, because uh, sometimes artists are too much, um, 
are too much uh, seen as a modern artist. Uh, they are too much related to a very specific period. Uh, we have the impression that they belong to the past and you have to renew the look on them. So this is the contemporary aspect of the artist. And to, uh, to, uh, to complete that goal, uh, you need new curators. So to renew the, the vision to of renew, the artist? To renew the vision of the artist. Yes, to yes. renew the vision of the artist, you need new curators, new critics, um, a gallerist who are able to create a mix between a contemporary artist and uh, Artung and Bergman and so on. Okay, so this is one aspect. But this is a kind of trap. Because if you say, okay, I want my artist to be contemporary, it implies that in a few years, in a few years, he won't be anymore. No, this because is, you would be like from the 2008 or 2015 yeah, or... This is, this is logical. You can't be always contemporary. This is not possible. This is just a, a view of mind, but this is not possible. So, there is this contemporary aspect, okay, but it is so important. It is really the, the key issue. It is so important that art historians come here and explain why those two artists are major part of abstract art and of history. Um, and this is another job. Of course, there are connections between uh, the contemporary aspect and the historical aspect, of course. Uh, could you say he's, a, he's an artist from the past, but he's still very relevant in the, in the, in the present? Yeah. And then you don't use this word as contemporary, but you could say he's relevant. He's relevant. Why like not? Bosch Why not? It's relevant now. Yeah. Or Bruegel or Rembrandt is still yeah. relevant and they're, they're part but of the past. You know, to be honest, I feel uneasy with uh, those kind of expressions. For example, in France, there is a new lieu commun. We say always that uh, the, the presence of the artist, the artist is present, the presence of the work. I think this is a way to, uh, this is smooth talking, <laughs> you know, to, uh, to give the impression that there is uh, something uh, nearly mystical. I, I think this is bullshit. Uh, I, I think that uh, it, is, it is so clear that Artung and Bergman are very big artists that I, I don't want to justify by saying they are contemporary or relevant. They're here. And that's... What do you think it's a good way to bring or to keep the artist alive then? Mm. Because that's the goal of every estate, mm. I suppose, mm. is to keep the work and the I artist think, alive. Okay, this will be very uh, simple. First, you have to show the works in a perfect state. I am sorry to, uh, to recall that. But this is really, really important, okay? So conservation, no, no, has the to preservation be has to be perfect. Interesting. No yeah. dust. Uh, think about the frames. Uh, think about the context in which your work will be exhibited. And what do you mean with the context? The context, for example, a, 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 a gray, a, a gray wall is not a white wall. Uh, something with a natural light is not the same as something with spots. So what you say is first think about first. the presentation. Exactly. The work has to be perfect and you the context has to you be know perfect. What? A work by Artum. If I show it um, uh, on the Antibes marketplace, nobody could imagine that this is so precious. But Okay, so okay. the place where you show it is also the, the very place, important. the context, the quality, the, the, quali the material quality of the work, this is absolutely essential. essential. So better to do it in a very big museum one time than 10 times in a small little place where it doesn't have any relevance. Yeah, of course, uh, uh, you're right. And, and, and uh, I would uh, add that uh, uh, sometimes it, it, it can be really... Uh, 
really a danger if you accept everything. It can be a danger, okay? For example, uh, if you are asked by a curator uh, that uh, he, he wants your artist with uh, um, an average artist, okay? uh, this is done and this is not a, a good choice and uh, you can pay it. So, so the first thing you say, the first thing important is the materiality? The materiality, yeah. Second is the context. The context, the context yeah. should be the best context yeah. for this artist. Yeah. And, or the other and, and, and uh, okay, so, so this is the first aspect. And the second aspect, I think that you need very good art historians to explain why uh, an artist is important in history. Okay, okay. this is absolutely essential. Uh, yeah. And and for that, you bring out already some things that you know why it's important, and then you give this as like little yeah. seeds to these art historians. Exactly. And then they can work on it. Yes, exactly. You know that was, for example, the, the case for uh, a PhD on Artung. Uh, in the foundation, uh, we were aware that uh, the system of Artung was very complex. First. Uh, he was making a sketch, okay, uh, very uh, nervously, and then um, he, he was uh, scaling it up uh, with painting, okay, so this is a very particular method, and that was very interesting for an art historian, but nobody was aware of uh, this method. So uh, we decided to, uh, to, to, to say to a younger art historian, maybe you should write your PhD on this very particular aspect because it will uh, renew uh, the consideration about Artung. And uh, this scholar decided to say, okay, with a, with a professor. And that was uh, something very, very important in Artung history because now the, 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 the consideration about Artung's method is completely different. Okay, so what you say, the first thing is quality and context. Second thing is also uh, materiality yeah. and context. The second thing is quality in research. Exactly. That you really have quality yeah. researchers who work on it. But uh, if, I can, uh, if I can stress it, uh, first of all, think about the good preservation of your works and your archives. Okay, this is really the, the basis. The preservation of your works and your archives and uh, if you want to preserve them think that it is possible to digitalize them because every time you um, handle you manipulate uh, something uh, you put it in danger and now we are very lucky because it is possible to computerize to um, digitalize uh, a lot of uh, uh, archives, pictures, works, and uh, this is a good way to make them accessible without any kind of manipulation. So think about it. I would like to end. Um, what are the next challenges for your foundation now in the future? Because it's 25 years. Mm. So where do you want to go? What are the, the next challenges? Yeah. At the beginning of the foundation, uh, we decided to make our collections travel all over the world, okay, to show Artung and Bergman outside in great museums. For example, there were uh, retrospectives in uh, Sao Paulo or uh, in Oslo a few, years, a few years ago, okay. So um, uh, here the foundation was uh, the core of um, uh, a kind of firework outside, okay? I think the next step, step will consist in um, enhancing uh, the, the generosity of the foundation towards the, the visitors, towards a larger audience. This is a magnificent place, very pure, uh, which has been uh, taught by Artung, uh, very precisely, the studios are great because uh, they are so authentic, they are so genuine. Um, and this is 
really a pity to, uh, to have only a few visitors a year. So I hope in the coming years uh, we will be able uh, to uh, open the place to a larger audience. And this is a very big challenge because here, this is a house and a studio, this is not a museum. It, it wasn't thought to meet, to welcome a lot of public, not at all. So you have to, um, to imagine uh, a structure uh, which will be completely preserved. The olive trees are protected, the walls are protected, Everything is very uh, fragile here, but you have to be more open on the outside world. You know, I think it will be great because the foundation is really concerned by um, uh, digitalization of uh, its uh, resources. But we have to, to keep a link with materiality. And oh, <laughs> this, is, this is so concrete in the studios because they are all those tools of the artist. You have the impression that the artists were here uh, yesterday and that, that they, they just uh, finished their the, the work, uh, that they just finished a session of creation yesterday. Yeah, yeah. And I think for the public, this is a great experience.